However, bombing and airstrikes are not the appropriate way to deal with this phenomenon. Military intervention in the occupation of foreign lands, even though justified in the name of repressing tyrannical regimes and advancing democracy, lead inevitably to the eruption of ethnic and religious discourse, discords due to atrocities, vacuum of power and the lack of domestic structures. As from outside becomes, as warfare becomes a situation, violence and bloodshed, the pattern of military solution from outside becomes a natural pattern for resolving these disputes from within as well, leading to what we are witnessing today. We should always remember that extra-regional intervention provide justification for terrorist acts and lead to more extremism. And in fact, only feeds and strengthens terrorism. Growing terrorist acts in the name of religion in our region, the increase in political clash between moderate Islamic groups and secular forces, standoffs between diplomatic forces in the Islamic world and the increase in disputes within the societies have turned our time into a special time. On the, on the other hand, growing violent extremism has resulted in increasing serious concerns that have become security concerns at the global level. If the Islamic Republic of Iran could reach a comprehensive agreement on its nuclear program and leave sanctions behind, it will be able to assume a more active role in the process of intra-regional dialogue in the Islamic world. This intra-regional dialogue is a precondition for the success of the altruistic efforts in order to achieve understanding, coexistence and tolerance at the regional level. We must display a pattern of constructive dialogue and cooperation begets and cooperation competition in the region. Ladies and gentlemen, the so-called Daesh or ISIL, which is nothing more than a terrorist group, typifies a violent extremism nowadays. It is born out of the aforesaid context and nurtured by the chaos which followed the occupation of Iraq and Afghanistan and fed on the assistance it received from within and outside the region throughout the past decade. This group is now at work to win by reigning terror and spreading fear throughout Middle Eastern societies and beyond. In this time of strife, there is a great need for action, but how this groups came into being and how they developed must inform our path forward. Daesh's predecessors were created in the security vacuum during the years of the occupation of Iraq and Afghanistan and benefited from the help of those who have sought to destabilize demo newborn democracies there. It did not exist. These groups did not exist prior to the attack on Iraq in 2003. And without probability, without the, such attacks and invasions, perhaps they would have never come into creation. The growth with addition of personnel, new recruits, financial means, equipping and training at the hands of countries in the region 
was became the tool so that they could change the governance, the system of governance in Syria and install a group of their choosing. Unfortunately, some have used these groups in order to spread their influence and guarantee the success of their agendas in the region. My intent here is not to assign blame or to rehash history. I only seek to show that the imposition of one's will on societies and other nations with the use of violent and extremist methods is not possible, is not successful, nor is it useful, even though it may yield the desired results on the, over the short term, over the long term, it will only create tragedies. Those who have planted the seeds of violence have really stepped on the rights of nations and the people of nations, and they have, through intertwined political justifications and religious justifications, they are certainly not worthy of any sort of political leadership needed to resolve conflicts, whereas the results of the activities of Daesh have emanated from the misunderstandings of the realities of the region by the outsiders, as well as those living in the region. These do not need to become weak points of others. I invite countries from inside the region as well as throughout the world that in order to take part in combating Daesh, they might unite with the people of Iraq and the people of Syria. But I call your attention to the following. Progress on this path can only lead to success when the people of Iraq and the people of Syria can be on the same front with them, can be united with them, and the international community then supports them. It is only them, the people of Iraq and Syria, and the afflicted areas in the region that can successfully overcome uh, and eliminate uh, these threats and challenges. Of course, they also must carry the burden of leadership. And with close cooperation, we must keep providing steadfast support. Ladies and gentlemen, it is important to realize that phenomena such as Daesh will not be eradicated only through military operations. In our opinion, any successful campaign against them in order to eradicate extremism in our region can only succeed with focus and attention on the points that I will include in, the, in this uh, conversation with you. One of them is fully complying with international law and the provision of the UN Charter in dealing with terrorism. Secondly, helping and enabling the relevant central authorities to lead the fight against this menace. This also include helping strengthening in, in strengthening Iraq's national unity, territorial integrity, and its all-inclusive government. Getting all the regional and international actors to discontinue military, financial, as well as logistical support for Daesh and other extremist groups active in the region. Mobilization of all regional states and resources to assist the Iraqi and Syrian people in fighting this war against extremism and terrorism, of course, with the assistance of the international community. Trying to peacefully settle crises in Syria through a political solution and avoiding the repetition of previous mistakes, ensuring consistency in the fight against Daesh wherever it may be present and whomever it may threaten, and avoiding differentiation between segments of population in terms of protection as it was the case in the past three months. Also, last but not least, putting an end to the Israeli occupation of Arab lands and denying 
the impunity for war crimes against the Palestinians, as it was the case recently, and as inaction in the face of cases similar to the recent war crimes against the people of Gaza, is a good rallying cause for extremist groups. Finally, the Islamic Republic of Iran is the only country in the region that does have the capabilities and did unconditionally assist the government of Iraq and is ready to render that aid and assistance who are afflicted by the bitter phenomenon known as Daesh. We, during the very first phases of this new phenomenon, this new challenge, we immediately sprung into action. One of them was to rise in defense of Erbil and freeing the Amerli region from the threats of Daesh prior to the intervention of anyone else or anyone else's forces in the region, even prior to them making a decision to intervene in any way, shape or form, we made available our military advisors on the front lines to our Iraqi and Kurd neighbors. So we are steadfast and we are ready to continue aiding the central authorities in those countries that have become the targets of such threats. Tomorrow during my, key, uh, my uh, speech at the United Nations General Assembly, I will remind folks that during the past year, within that same uh, General Assembly, I did give a strong warning in the face of violence and extremism. This year I will repeat myself. If the appropriate behavior is not chosen, if the appropriate formula is not chosen and executed, we will continue to see an ever-increasing violent and extremist region which will threaten the entire world. The appropriate formula to combat such a phenomenon <clears throat> does not lie from outside the region but lies within the creativity and collaboration of inter as well as intra-regional forces with the support of the international community. I do thank you. Thank you for joining us, Mr. President. I was wondering if you heard or read President Obama's speech to the General Assembly because it is a call against extremism and it sounded a lot like some of the things you have been saying. Do you think you, the two of you, are on the same, um, the same wavelength, as they say? Well, in any fashion, uh, today the topic of extremism and violence is a topic that must receive mutual assistance in, er in the eradication of it, uh, because everyone is equally threatened. And I do think that all of the leaders of the international community agree on this, that one cannot, in the face of threats and extremism, uh, remain silent. Uh, we must all take actions so that this regional threat and this international threat can be eradicated. Uh, perhaps there are differences of opinion in the uh, in the formula that is required to be applied here but in the essence the core of the issue which is the fact that a grave threat endangers all of us today uh, and we must take effective steps to combat it i do believe that there is uh, a great uh, deal of understanding and mutual understanding you believe that the united states is correct in its strategy to fight isis I uh, am not aware of the American plans uh, and the formulas and what they intend to execute. I can only tell you about the plans of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Iran, from the very first moment 